the show now by Nick Moldenhauer from the Chicago Steel. Nick, how you doing? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming on. So this is your second year in Chicago, first full season with games now. What was kind of led to the decision for you to go down to the USHL? Because you were a first round pick in the OHL, right? Yep. Um, I think the biggest thing for me was kind of when that COVID year happened, um, the OHL wasn't playing at all. So um, I wanted to, to go down to the States where hockey was still going on and I could be able to do what I love. So um, I think that was the, the main reason to, to come down to the States. So was the initial plan always to come down to the USHL or like you said, did, was COVID just so in the way that you just, just had to go, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I was always kind of on the fence between OHL and NCAA, um, and that, that COVID year kind of sealed the deal for me to, to go down to the States and, and be able to play. So what do you think you, of your decision now? You've lived in Chicago or Chicago area for two years now. Like, What's it like being a Chicago Steel player? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, the development there is unreal. They do an unreal job um, developing players and, and really getting the most out of them, I think um the whole the whole process over there is unreal and especially considering they there's a lot of top end guys who go to Chicago we all push each other in practice and in the weight room and that kind of thing so um I'm super happy with my decision and it's been an unreal experience there so far it's funny you say that. I had Matt Coronado on the show last year and he pretty much said the same thing it's just like the competition is so good in Chicago that you just constantly improve because you really have no choice to improve if not your spot's kind of going to get taken um, exactly yeah, so what led to you having such a good season this year, you think? Is it that competition? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, just slowly getting better and better and starting to feel more confident as things kind of move forward. Um, I was definitely super out of shape coming coming off that one injury. So um, I think as things kind of move forward throughout the season, I started to, to kind of get my wind back and my feet underneath me finally. So um, I think that was the biggest thing for me was just getting back into into shape and starting to feel confident again. So um, I think that was the, the one of the bigger things to my success this year. So how long do you think it took you to finally kind of get moving again? Because you were pretty much a point per game player this season. Yeah, I think it took me around 15, 15 games or so till I was starting to feel good again. And uh, I guess for people who haven't seen you play, how would you how would you describe your game to somebody? Yeah, I'm a 200 foot player. Uh, I see the ice really, really well. Just kind of my ability to to read off guys and and make plays and find those soft areas. The ice is really, really good. Um, my my compete level is super, super high, uh, and I have the ability to to put the puck in the back of that as well. Yeah, so you had 18 goals this season, 43 points, 41 games, but four penalty minutes. And I was looking back; it seems to be a pretty good trend. I think the most you've had in the last few years is 16. How how do you stay out of the box so consistently? Um, I think the biggest thing for me is just keeping a level head. Um, I don't really get any retaliation penalties at all. So um, when I kind of do get a penalty, it's kind of like a fluky high stick or something like that. Um, I, I like to play super, super hard and compete super hard, but um, I keep it clean and don't really take any dumb penalties. So um, so you recently had the NHL draft combine too. Can you just talk about your experience there and kind of what goes on there for people who don't know? Yeah, I mean, it was a really cool experience. Um, they took care of us really, really well. Uh, but pretty much the, the first four or five days is just straight interviews, um, just kind of meeting with the teams and the GMs and the scouts um, who want to who wanna meet with you. And then um, the last two days of the week is, is pretty much all the testing. So um, the, they, they have the one day for the, uh, the VO2 max test, which is a pretty hard biking test. You wear the, the oxygen mask and – pretty much have to bike until your legs can't move anymore. So that's a pretty tough test. And then uh, the next day is all the, the chin-ups and the 5-10-5 and bench press and the 30-second the, the, the wind gate test after that too. So um, it's pretty much a few days of interviews and then um, get your t- testing done and then you're, you're ready to go. So what are those interviews like? You said you talk to like the GMs and scouts and stuff. You know, sometimes you hear some funny stories that come from them. Are they – are they what you expected, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, um, there was definitely some some curveball questions, but <laughs> um, I think they, they were pretty straightforward. I think they just wanted to kind of get to know you as a player and, and uh, a little bit of background info so that they when they draft you that they know who they're, who they're picking and 
there's a little bit of a relationship formed there. So um, I think that's the, the biggest reason. So you said the start of the season, it kind of took you a little bit to get going, but at the end of the season, you end up playing for Team Canada at the World Under-18 Championships in Germany. I guess, firstly, like, what did that mean to you to, like, get the call to say you were going to play for Team Canada? Yeah, I mean, that was that was surreal. Um, I think anytime you kind of get a chance to put that jersey on is, is a true honor. So um, getting that call was, was awesome. Um, and then just playing in the tournament was super, super cool, too, being able to play against all those those European guys you've never really seen or played against before was, was awesome as well as playing with those uh, Canadians on my team that I've never seen or really played with or against um, before was, was super cool too. So um, I think, I think that was, was an awesome experience. And then even just the coaching staff um, really, really high end coaching staff. So uh, learned a lot from them. So yeah, I think overall it was an awesome experience. So it was in Germany. Did you get to experience Germany at all, or was kind of COVID restrictions too heavy? Stuff? No, we we actually did get to to tour awesome. around our little town a little bit, which was which was super cool. You know, um, just going out for for some walks here and there, and touring around the town with some of the guys was was really cool. So didn't have to be all cooped up in our, our hotel rooms, which was really nice. Yeah, that's perfect. That'd be the worst. Just going all the way over there just to look out of the window the entire time. Um, yeah. So you said like being a ushl player i think there was only three of you on the team including you and one of them is your own teammate like was there one player maybe on your team and maybe someone not on your team and you were like wow this kid's this kid's pretty good too yeah i mean i think definitely on my team connor bedard was <laughs> was uh an unreal player to just be able to watch and and kind of learn from uh i think that he was he's an unreal player so mm-hmm. um I, i'd say him for my team and then um, I think the, the Kemmel kid on, on Finland, Finland um, yeah. was, was unreal um, playing against him. He, he's, a, he's a great player. So uh, I'd say those two guys. Um, okay, so we'll just move on to the draft quickly. So obviously it's coming up this week. You must be pretty excited. Like, was there a moment you think you realized that you're like, wow, like I actually can get drafted here and this is a legit career path for me? Um, I don't think there was one defining moment, um, that I was like, okay, like this could be a possibility. I think, um, just over the years kind of working super, super hard. And, um, it's always been my goal, um, to get drafted, even though that's just kind of the start. But, um, I think just kind of working towards that and always having that mindset that, that I'm going to get drafted. Um, even if that, that wasn't the case. Um, I think that that mindset has kind of helped me get to where, where I wanted to be as of right now. So uh, I don't think there was one defining moment. And last one, two part question. Uh, what are your plans for the draft and what are you looking forward to the most? Yeah, um, so I'm going down to Montreal Wednesday morning mm-hmm. um, and then going to be there for the draft. And uh, I, I guess those are my plans. And then um, I think. Uh, what I'm looking forward to most is just enjoying the experience. I'm um, just trying to soak it all in and it's only going to happen once. So um, I don't want to get too stressed out or too hung up on where I land or, or where I, where I end up going. So just trying to enjoy the whole experience and, and have fun doing it. So. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Nick, for taking the time to talk to me. Good luck with the draft and uh, good luck with everything else too. Thank you. I appreciate it.